Okay, we're going to start chapter 2 today. So 2.1 is about quadratic functions. We're going to continue to talk about completing the square with this. So hopefully you all remember the steps of it, but we're going to start with general form. So we have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, um, where a, b, and c are real numbers. Okay, the one that we're going to really focus on is standard form. And that's where you can get a lot of your information from. So it's f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Um, a cannot equal 0. So we know uh, from before that if a is greater than 0, the parabola points upward. And if a is less than 0, or it's negative, then we have a parabola pointing downward. The vertex is your hk and your point xy uh, is just a point on the parabola, so it's considered a solution point. All right, so we're going to do an example, and we're going to put this in standard form. So we need to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and the intercepts. And I'll give you a second to catch up. Okay. So, the first thing we need to do is take our function and put it into standard form. So that allows us to kind of gather all of the data that we have um, been asked to find. So let's just make some steps over here because again, we're gonna be completing the square. So we wanna just kind of refresh our memory on how to do this. And the first thing that you have to do is you have to make sure uh, that a, which is that first coefficient with your x squared, is equal to positive one. So you have to have a equal to 1. Um, and to do that, remember, we're only going to factor out a from the first two terms. OK, so that's what I'm going to do first. So remember, this is that idea where you're just scooting over the 1. right? You just push it to the side. And then we're going to take that negative 1 out of the first two terms. So this is going to become a positive x squared um, minus 4x. And then we don't want to do anything with the 1. We just want to have that kind of off to the side there. Step 2, you have to take half of b and then square it. And then that's when you're going to want to um, add and subtract. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take half of b, so half of negative 4 is negative 2.
and you want to add that squared. So I have a negative 2 squared. I still have this plus 1 on the outside. Now, because I have a plus 1 um, <clears throat> out here, this is where you're going to kind of think about what am I adding or subtracting. So on the inside, uh, you have this plus 4, because negative 2 squared is 4. But remember, you're really distributing the negative all the way through. So this positive 4 actually becomes a negative 4 once you distribute. So if you're subtracting 4 on the inside, you need to add 4 on the outside. And then you can um, do step 3, which is to factor and simplify. Okay, so we factor it. And this becomes the opposite of x minus 2 squared plus 5. Okay, so now at that point, we need to find um, all of the information that they asked us to find. So they wanted to know the vertex. So to find the vertex, that's your h and k. So remember, h is the opposite of what you see. So if it's a minus 2, then it's really a positive 2. And then 5. So we have a vertex at 2, 5. Um, think about what's happening here. All of these represent parabolas. So if you have a vertex at 2, 5, then your axis of symmetry is going through that vertex. So that's going to give you x equals 2. Okay, remember to find the axis of symmetry, you could also do x equals negative b over 2a. So you could plug all those in coming from that beginning part, right? where this is b and this is a. So you could also do negative 4 over 2 times negative 1, which gives you a negative 4 over a negative 2, simplifying to x equals 2. So you could also solve for it by hand if you wanted to. Um, the y-intercept, okay, so remember that to find the y-intercept, you have to plug in 0 for x. So we plug in x equals 0. And it's easiest to do this back into the general form. So that means that y is going to equal negative 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 1. So y is 1. Remember, any time you give an intercept, you have to write it as an ordered pair. So this is 0, 1. To find the x-intercept, you have to plug in 0, I'm running out of room, plug in uh, y equals 0. Now it's easiest to do this into the standard form because it's just solved already and it's just much simpler. So you have 0 equals negative uh, x minus 2 squared plus 5. So we go to solve for that and you need to subtract the 5. So you get negative 5 equals the opposite of x minus 2 squared. Divide by the negative and they both become positive. And then we're going to take the square root. So you end up getting plus or minus the square root of 5 equals x minus 2. And then we just add over the 2. So 2 plus or minus um, x, I'm sorry, the square root of 5. So these are the x-intercepts. There are two of them. All right, so we have 2 plus or minus the square root of 5, comma, 0. You want to make sure that your square root won't simplify, okay? And in this case, it doesn't. So all of this, from standard form down to all of these intercepts, are part of our answer for this problem. So they were looking for quite a bit of information. Okay, let's try that again. Same process, new problem. Okay, so we'll call this b, I guess. Um, so let's start out with f of x equals 2x squared plus x minus 3. Okay, so again, the first thing that we're going to want to do is put this into standard form. In order to do that, you have to complete the square. So I'm going to start out by scooting over that negative 3 and taking the 2 out of the first two terms. So I have x squared plus 1 half x. Then you have to take half of b. So taking like half 
um, of something means really just to multiply that, right? So if I take half of a half, then I'm really doing one half times one half, which gives me one fourth. So I'm adding a one fourth squared on the inside. So one fourth squared is going to give me a sixteenth but you have to multiply it by the two. So inside I'm doing plus one sixteenth, but when I multiply it by the two, I'm really adding, um, what, an eighth? So, <coughs> excuse me. So now I'm adding, <coughs> sorry, I'm adding an eighth on the inside, so therefore I have to subtract an eighth on the outside. You have to do the opposite of what was being done in here. Get a common denominator, this is going to be like 24 over 8. So now we just simplify. So f of x equals 2 times the quantity x plus 1 fourth squared uh, minus 25 over 8. Okay, so now it's in standard form. Now you have to find all the other information. So the vertex should be very easy at that point. You're going to do the opposite of the x, which is negative 1 fourth. And then your y is negative 25 over 8. Remember that the axis of symmetry can either be found by, again, plugging it into x equals negative b over 2a, or you can just simply look at your vertex, and that is your x. So x equals negative 1 fourth. And then we got to find that y intercept uh, and the x intercepts. So in order to do that, remember you're going to want to plug in 0. So if you take a look in general form, right, to find the y-intercept, it just means that x equals 0. Well, you should be able to recognize that that c term will always be your y-intercept. So this is 0, negative 3, and there's really not any work to do for that. Uh, for the x-intercept, though, there is some more work. So again, you want to plug that into standard form. So I have 0 equals 2 times x plus 1 fourth squared minus 25 over 8 first thing you want to do is add over the 25 over 8 and then you want to multiply by a half or divide by 2 same difference and this is going to give you 25 over 16 The next step you're going to have to do would be to take the square root of both sides. So when you take the square root, remember that's going to give you that plus and minus solution. Um, also 25 and 16 are perfect squares, so you end up getting 5 over 4, which is nice. And that's equal to x plus 1 fourth. At that point you want to subtract the 1 fourth. So you're going to have a negative 1 fourth plus 5 fourths. And you're also going to have a negative 1 fourth minus 5 fourths. Uh, let's see, this gives you 4 over 4, which is 1. And this gives you negative 6 over 4, which is negative 3 halves. So your x-intercepts are negative 3 halves 0 and 1 0. And then here is all the information they asked you to find for that particular problem. Okay, let's go backwards now. So let's say that, th let me just get a new piece of paper. All right, <clears throat> so let's say this time uh, they give you some information. So we'll call this example two. Um, write the equation. Of the parabola. with vertex negative 2, 1 and passing through one negative 4 and we're going to put this in standard form. Okay. So standard form looks like f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And so you have to think about what you've been given. You've been given a vertex, and the vertex is hk. 
you've also been given a point that you know is on the parabola. So that's like a solution point of x, y. Now you just have to plug it all in in order to find a. So remember f of x is the same as y. So you have negative 4 equals a times x, which in this case is 1, minus h. So you're going to end up with a plus 2 squared and then plus 1. And then you just simplify. So negative 4 equals uh, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 squared gives us 9. So that's 9a plus 1. Subtract the 1. You end up with negative 5 equals 9a. And then divide by the 9 to give you negative 5 ninths. So remember, they wanted this in standard form. So you have to take it back and plug it in. And you should only be plugging in the a and the hk, the vertex. So final answer should look like f of x equals negative 5 over 9 times x uh, plus 2 squared plus 1. Okay, um, another type of example that you might see uh, would be something that looks like this. So, write two quadratic functions with x-intercepts at negative 2, 0, and 4, 0. Okay, so think about what that means for a second. So you want to write quadratic functions, and their x-intercepts are negative 2, 0, and 4, 0. So what that really means is that when you used the zero product property, right, and you went to solve for x, you got these solutions because that's all the x-intercepts are. They're just the solutions um, for the equation. So if you think about how can I get a negative 2, well, if you started with x plus 2, um, wouldn't that give you a result of negative 2 when that was set equal to 0? Same thing here. To get a 4, you could start out with x minus 4. So there are different representations that you could make so that you still got a negative 2. For example, you could have had like negative 2x plus 4. If you set each of these equal to 0 and you solve, you're still going to produce the solution of negative 2, which therefore becomes our x-intercept. Same idea here. You could go through and you could multiply by 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. Um, you could have like 5x minus 20 as um, a binomial to represent uh, getting a solution of 4. So when they ask you to write two quadratic functions with these intercepts, you basically think about how would I get these solutions. So the easiest one to do would be to have f of x equals x plus 2 times x minus 4. And then you would just want to FOIL that out or distribute to give you x squared minus 2x, um, sorry, minus 8. So this is a minus 8. Um, you could also have, like I said, multiplied through by 2. So you could have started with f of x equals negative 2x plus 4. Uh, and times our example here, 5x minus 20. These result in a 4, 0, and a negative 2, 0. So when you distribute this, you get negative 10x squared. Uh, let's see, plus 20, uh, plus 40, so that's plus 60x minus 80. So hopefully you recognize that there are infinite possibilities here. Uh, remember, this is like a minus 8. Um, so there's lots of ways you could do that. You just have to go through and you have to think about how could I get a solution of negative 2 and positive 4. All right, so we talked about the axis of symmetry, and you can just plug it in to negative x, or I'm sorry, x equals negative b over 2a. So I just want to write that down formally. So the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2 times a.
okay? Or you can look at the vertex, but sometimes the vertex isn't obvious. So keeping that um, equation in mind, x equals negative b over 2a, if I gave you this example, um, if f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 2x minus 1, what is the axis of symmetry? So, I mean, you could spend the time and put it into standard form and then, um, you know, you could use completing the square to get there and then you could find the vertex and therefore find the um, axis of symmetry that way. But you don't have to do all that work because we know that x is equal to negative b over 2 times a. And remember that this is a, b, and c. So you can just plug it in. So x equals negative 2 over 2 times 3, giving you negative 2 over 6. So the axis of symmetry in this case is negative one-third. A much quicker way of doing it if you know the formula. Um, there's another type of question in your homework, and sometimes students get kind of confused by this one. Um, but it says, what x value maximizes f of x equals negative 4x squared? plus 5x minus 1. Okay, so now in order to, do, you need to think about what's happening here. What kind of parabola am I talking about? Because I don't know if you've noticed yet, but we're talking about quadratics and therefore we're talking about parabolas. So every parabola has a vertex. It's either the maximum or the minimum and it really is based on the A value. So when the A value is positive, you have a maximum and when the A value um, I'm sorry, when the A value is positive, you have a parabola that points upward, and therefore you have a minimum. But if you have an A value that's negative, which is what we have in this case, then in this case, that means that our parabola is going to point downward. So that is going to be a maximum point. Well, doesn't that mean that the X value that maximizes this function is just really the vertex, right? The X um, coordinate of the vertex. And if you were to take the graphing calculator and put this in so hopefully you can see that so if I put this in here um, to x equals so I have negative 4x squared um, plus 5x minus 1 and I was to graph it then I see here that this point is the vertex and it indeed is the maximum of the graph. So when they want to know what is the x value that maximizes it, they really just want to know what is the x value of the vertex. And in that case, isn't it just the axis of symmetry, right? So you can use that whole idea of the axis of symmetry. So negative b over 2 times a and you get 5 over 8. So the x value that maximizes it is 5 8. Okay, hopefully most of this makes sense. Um, hopefully it was a good review of completing the square. You can always go back and watch this video if you had trouble on particular parts, um, but you do need to do the 2-1-A um, homework tonight. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow.